present the VitalEnergyBunkers.org with your host, Tom Judge. Here I am. We can stop that racket in the background. And we're going to try and get a presentation going here on how to customize your desktop. It's a very simple presentation. It's for newbies. And we're going to talk about how to customize our desktop. It's awesome newbie skills, but however, we want to give everybody a chance. So this is a newbie course, Learn Ubuntu. We have more advanced courses planned. But you got to start somewhere, and this is a good place to start. So let's move on with our presentation. Customizing your GNOME desktop. Now you can change your desktop from this very simple, very bland looking desktop we have here from this to something like this. That's my favorite puppy dog, Sunny. We got her from the shelter. But you can see there's a startling difference in the way those two desktops appear. And what this chapter and this presentation is about is how to do that, how to customize your desktop then personalize it for yourself. It's not that hard to do, however, Whenever you're customizing something, I want to warn you about something. Sometimes you press a button or click on something and nothing happens. Like our friend here said, oops, nothing happened. Well, usually something did happen and you'll find out later what it was. So the point is, if you click on something and nothing happened, don't just ignore it. Take a look. Be careful. Look twice. Click once and you'll be much better off. Now, customizing our system begins with under the system menu, we select preferences. There's a lot of choices we have there. There we go. We can do our, our mouse. If you need assistance, if you have some disabilities, there are assistive technologies available. Uh, the appearance of our desktop is what we're going to mainly spend our time with. But you can also set your power management, monitors, Ubuntu One settings for your cloud connection. You want to add some keyboard shortcuts, your sound control, network connections, keyboard, and the screensaver. All these things here all appear in the settings, preferences. Now, for now, we're going to concentrate on the appearance because that's what this presentation is about how to customize your desktop for yourself. Now, when you select appearance, the first thing you have is a theme. This is the easiest way to adjust your desktop is to select a different theme. I suggest that you take a note of what theme you're on before you make any changes. So if you're not happy with what you do, you can always go back to that. As you notice, as you take a different theme, you'll immediately see a change in the desktop. Now, the background image will probably not change, but you'll see the uh, the panel up top change, the icons may change, other things around your desktop will change, but probably not the background. That's handled separately. You can also select the fonts that we display and how they are rendered. Now, a lot of this depends on the quality of your display. And we can also change the background by selecting the background tab, and here's what we spend most of our time with explaining how to do that. And there also are visual effects. Now, in, in version 10.4 and less, there's a visual effects tab here under the preferences and appearance. In newer versions, it's handled by a thing called Compiz. Compiz is one of the first compositing Windows managers for the X Windows system. The X Windows system is underlying your desktop. Whatever desktop you're using is built on top of the X Windows system. The display hardware, of course, must be up to snuff to support this, so depending on how good your video card is and how good your monitor is will depend on how fancy you'll be able to have your graphics appear on your screen. You can add the Compiz Manager on systems greater than 10.04 through the Synaptic Package Manager. Here we're showing that we just searched for Compiz and we found the Compiz Manager. After adding that, we have a choice under our preferences, system preferences menu for the Compiz. Again, this is on systems greater than 10.04, especially with the newer 
Unity desktop, you'll have to use this to, do, to configure how your effects are. And here's a shot of the Compiz Config Manager window and the options you have to select there. Now, it's very important, I we mentioned this early in the class, and we will re-mention it here. When you log in, you choose your desktop. This course is based on the GNOME desktop. But even if you have a newer system, when you log in, after you select your username before your password, down here on the older screens, you can select which desktop you want. And the Ubuntu Classic is the GNOME desktop. On the newer systems, if you, have, if you went and put in the newest 12.04, you will have another little button in your login that will let you select the desktop. We're going to have a presentation on 12.4 probably the early next month. I'm just putting it together now. We should do a comparison side by side of 12.4 versus 10.4 so you can see where things have moved to and what's changed. But for now, we're concentrating still on the version 10.4 LTS GNOME desktop. So you can select that at login. This is the Unity desktop which will not match this particular course except for the appendices we will be adding at the end. So back to the GNOME desktop. Uh, you have, if you, if you are using, by the way, the newer desktop, you can just uh, open that manager and type compiz and it will find the application for you. Back to GNOME. Now we can change our background. We have, we have images that are provided in the installation, we can select a different background that as you change the background, it will immediately change on your desktop. Now, one th good idea is to check your monitor settings under Preferences and Monitor. You can look and see what your monitor resolution is. Now, warning, if you happen to try to set this too high, you can end up with a blank screen. You won't be able to see anything. If you completely muck up your desktop settings and cannot see your screen at all, you can try this. If you can get to a terminal window, you can boot into a terminal window, by the way, or hit Alt F1, Control Alt F1, will get you to a full screen terminal window. And you can type this sudo dpackage reconfigure space dash phigh x server dash x org. And that will set your desktop back to its original settings default settings. It may not be the resolution you want, but it'll get you back so you at least have a GUI again. I've pulled myself out of the fire a couple of times with this one. Now, as part of these lab exercises, if you notice in that lab, for this chapter we have some images you can download, some scenes, including my lovely doggy. So you can right-click on those and save them, or you can use your own images. But one of the points is, let me go back to slides is look at your desktop resolution, 1152 by 864. Ideally, you want a picture that's 1152 by 864 to properly fill that. If you don't have that size picture, you'll be modifying how it's used to fill. You can use the GIMP image editor to resize a picture and make it the right size to fit your desktop. That's one possibility. And then you can click Add, see the little Add button here. When you go to Background, click the Add button, then you can add whatever images you want to be available for your desktop. Here we're adding my little doggy picture. And then once it's there, it's added, I select it. Now, notice this button down here, underneath there. We have a choice of Tile, Zoom, Scale, Stretch, Span, or Center. Now, the span is only good if you're using dual desktops, if you have two monitors hooked up to make one big desktop. Otherwise, span is not going to do a thing for you. Now, here's a zoomed image. Now, if you notice it's zoomed in, you may not see the entire thing. We started with an image that's only 300 by 300 pixels. Just to illustrate this point, normally you'd want a, a picture that's, that's closer to your resolution than that. But to illustrate it, we use this size picture. And here's your choices. Tile, repeat the image to fill the screen entirely. Zoom, zooms the picture in but may crop some of the edges of the picture. Center, just centers the picture in the center of your desktop. Scale, enlarges it until it meets at least one edge. 
It doesn't distort it, though. It keeps the aspect ratio of the picture for you, but it makes it one edge fit. So you may have some different edges, in which case you can select the color for your background. The color you select will appear there. Stretch enlarges the image to all of space, but this may skew the image or distort the aspect ratio of the image. And again, they said span. If you have multiple monitors hooked up, you're making one big desktop span, will span the image across both, but will not necessarily stretch it to fit. Here is a sample of the image centered. Here is a sample of this 300 pixel by 300 pixel image tiled. Here, by the way, we took a small Ubuntu. Normally you would do tiling when you have a very small image you want to span across your desktop or fill your desktop with such as the little Ubuntu logo. Here we scaled it. Now notice the top and bottom hits the screen but left and right, we're seeing that whatever the background color of the desktop is. Some people like this because you can put icons over here and they won't be hidden by the picture or the distorted the picture. The picture stays in the clear. But you have left and right because the picture filled top and bottom. Stretch, we now fill them and see what happened. It stretched the picture out to fill the entire screen. And that's about it. A little quickie demonstration on how to customize your desktop. We hope that you enjoyed this little demonstration. Again, it is newbie skills, but if you've never done this before, it's nice to see it once. It's always nice to have a little leg up, a little help when you're starting out.